Hi, I'm Alan Bresnik, Cable Video Practice Leader at Light Reading. We're here with Harj Gutman. Harj is Vice President of Strategic Products for Precision Optical Technologies. Now, Harj, thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you for ha having me, Alan. Um, and thanks for the introduction. Sure. Um, we're going to be talking about Next Gen Pon. So uh, let's first back up a little bit, Harj, and talk about how is Pon evolving right now? How quickly is it evolving? So if, if you look at uh, Pon, you know, it, it just go back in history. It, it started like 20 years ago, and it's been rapidly uh, evolving, and we have over 9 million homes uh, passed in the U.S. Uh, and currently, we are deploying 10 gig pawn, which is XGS pawn. But in 20 years ago, it started with the B pawn, which is a 600 meg. And typically, you're seeing, you know, uh, a 10 year cycle for 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 one pawn standard. We went from uh, 600 megs to X uh, to G pawn in I think uh, 2000, early 2000s, and then uh, 2008, I think, and then XGS pawn. 10 gig pawn is started uh, deployments in 2016, and and it's still being deployed. But I I, I feel the pawn cycles are getting smaller, and and people are already looking at 25 and 50 gig pawn. Right. Okay. Well, that leads right into the, my next question: is where is pawn technology heading, and what do what do we actually consider high speed pawn these days? Because the bar seems to keep getting higher and higher. Yeah. So you know what that, that that's a great question. You know you you ask you ask that to different people, you get different answers, right? Uh, right. I think it, it's a little bit subjective, but uh, to me personally, anything above hundred meg uh, is 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 high speed porn. Most operators can provide up five hundred megs to up to one gig and beyond. So I I I I think that to me is a you know, rough ballpark of what high speed porn is. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. What kinds of services and applications will high speed pawn enable that we don't see now? So, I mean, I, I think uh, fiber to the home, you know, providing internet to to uh, to homes will still be the primary application for pawn. But we are seeing uh, other applications, for example, five G. You know, fiber pawn provides high bandwidth right. and. and uh, uh, what you call low latency, right? And it, it use pawn to connect uh, cellular grids, right? Front hall, for fiber to the uh, working from home, telehealth, and AI will of course drive so many applications for pawn, right? I mean, right. pawn is the final frontier for access technologies. Eventually, the all access technology ten years from now will will be predominantly pawn, right? Yeah, there'll still be HFC for cable operators around, but even even operators are deploying more and more upon. You said the final frontier. I expect to hear some Star Trek music in the background. Uh, what are, what are the benefits we can expect to see in the coming years from high speed pod? You touched on it. So you can go into a little more detail about that. I, I think the, the the biggest advantage of, of fiber uh, pawn is it's it stands for passive optical networks, right? So right. inherently the uh, the the networks are passive, so although you do have remote OLTs with with an OLT in the field with, with an Ethernet backhaul. So, but but when you have uh, a passive network, you have less components in the network, so it's 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 more cost effective. You know, uh, less opex, more reliability. It's easier to upgrade, right? For example, today we're deploying ten gig pawn, and you want to go to twenty five or fifty gig. Once yeah. you have the fiber deployed you're just going to change the ends of the network we have to go to the home to the subscriber mm -hmm. end and change the ont uh if you look at some like hfc you have to uh, when you upgrade there's a lot more elements need, needed to be upgraded and um, compared to pawn okay well you, you talked about how it's less challenging than upgrading hfc but what are the biggest challenges in upgrading and deploying high speed pawn? i i think the biggest Challenges is I, I think today uh, a lot of the uh, the pawn equipment is is kind of vendor locked, right? So you have mm -hmm. you 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 are tied to 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 a specific vendor, and it which sometimes leads to uh, 
long uh, deployments, long uh, lead times, and uh, and you know not difficult configurations. So uh, I, I I think in the future, or what we are trying to do at at Precision is to create uh, an 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 open system, right? So we use right. white box OLTs uh, with and and we build our own software on top top of that, right? So. And some of the other challenges, I also see that because Pond is limited to 20 kilometers, right? So you have to have remote OLTs, which require powering and cabinets right. and stuff like that in the field, right? Right. Okay. Well, you touched on it, but a little bit, but I'll get into a little bit, want to get into a little bit more. How can these challenges that we talked about be overcome and what, what solutions are you working on at Precision Optical? So yeah, I, I guess I already mentioned some of the challenges of you know having an open open ended system, right? I think right. Uh, that would really benefit, especially the smaller operators. And and as far as extending using remote OLTs, uh, we are working on 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 pawn extenders, which are optical modules, which should be co located uh, with you know next to the OLT in the central office. That will allow the fiber optical links to be extended to 60, 70 kilometers. So you won't have any remote OLTs in the field. Uh, we're working on optical modules for XGS pond, 25 and 50 gig pond. And then when we eventually get to coherent pond, which is 100 gig in, in 10 years or whatever the, that time frame may be, uh, that coherent pond will have a lot of advantages. You'll have increased mm -hmm. loss budgets and you can 70, 80 kilometers. So a lot of the, uh, the limitations of today's pond will be, will, will kind of be overcome by coherent pond. My last question is how should operators prepare for next gen pond? What steps should they be taking to get their networks ready? So I, I, I think they obviously scalability because you know like you can't keep on you know changing from one point to another so you have to make sure that your networks are easily scalable to the next next pawn right and making sure that you know that you take account of the loss budget right it's today it's 29 db mm -hmm. and uh you know if, if if you want to go beyond 29 db you need pawn extenders which which we're building on right and uh so you, you you just have to look at whether you're going to do greenfield or is is the population centers expanding in a specific area so you put more fiber in there so uh there, there, there's you know you have to deploy networks today but i think the most important thing is to make sure that they are scalable for for uh, you know uh next generation con okay thanks arch any last things you wanted to add to our conversation no, I, I think uh, uh, the, the only thing I would say is that I think it's an excite, exciting time for pawn technology. Uh, I, I, I think fiber, once you deploy fiber to the home, it does have unlimited bandwidth. You know, there's, there's no limitation, right? The limitation is only in the optical equipment. And uh, once, once, once we have the fiber deployed, then you just change the ends of the network. So it, it has great advantages. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time, Paris. Thanks for sharing your expertise and uh, we look forward to hearing more. Okay. Thank you.